Hey guys, it's your boy Strong Bean here and talk of another video and today we're talking about Dragon Ball Sparking Zero and why it's a fantastic game or not. If you're a Dragon Ball fan and want to know a bit about the game, stick around because this video is right for you. So, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero or as many recall it, Budokai Tenkaichi is the latest entry in this legendary series of Dragon Ball games and right off the bat one of the things that stands out immediately in this game is the huge roster we got over 180 characters with more to come in future DLCs obviously it's so hard to pick what character to play sometimes because there's so many all of your favorites are there we got classics like Frieza, Janemba we even got Tapion, my favorite character. We got all of the like, iconic ones, Goku, Vegeta, obviously. But we also got the less favorite ones, like the freaking Ginyu Force, or like Lord <laughs> Slug. The gameplay, let's start off with that. It's top tier. There you go, that's it. No, okay, I'm just kidding. If you're familiar with the earlier Budokai or Tenkaichi games, you already know what to expect in this game. Those fast paced, explosive 3D battles with like environment changing, exploding all around you, but just better. Like with today's modern graphics, what it does differently though is like the, the, the mechanics are different. Like it feels way smoother than back in the day. Back in the day, the game was already very, very smooth. Like it, it didn't feel like very choppy when fighting. Now it's smooth. I've played a lot of fighting games throughout the years and never have I played a smoother, like, fast-paced fighting game like this. It's just fantastic. And I love that they, like, put so much effort into making the gameplay what it is. And uh, this is something you gotta try out for yourself. Just me telling you won't make it any justice. That's how good it is. So, in terms of graphics, the attention to detail is insane. Absolutely gorgeous. Fantastic. This game has some of the most amazing recreations of fights from the anime. It's unbelievable. I don't know, man. It's just... <laughs> yeah, you got those anime style like fighting scenes that really do feel as if you were watching the actual anime of Dragon Ball Z or Dragon Ball Super especially like with the destructive environment and everything that I mentioned earlier it's just wow I this I don't know man these graphics it's it really feels like sometimes I'm fighting if you do an ultimate attack I just like put my controller down and just watch it as if I'm watching in the anime itself like that's how good it is. Obviously you shouldn't put the controller down because uh, it's fast paced and your opponent's gonna get on your ass. And then, and like I just said, the ultimate attacks, they are a cinematic masterpiece. Like every single one I've tried, a lot of them already, and it's, it's a movie, like, I don't know man, it's a freaking movie. That's how good they are, it's awesome. To see that kind of effects in the Dragon Ball game, it's been a long time coming. DBZ Kakarot was very, very good. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the Xenoverse ones, even though I know that a lot of people actually do and still play to this day. But it's been a long time since I've seen such a good Dragon Ball game and I'm very, very happy with it. Then you got the story mode. The story mode in itself uh, does a great, great job of retelling those key moments in the anime. You have different arcs. You have um, the first one that you have to play is Goku's arc, obviously. And it starts off like from the key moments from the beginning of Goku in Dragon Ball Z, all, all the way to Dragon Ball Super, to the Tournament of Power, it ends with Jiren. In Kakarot, here's the difference. Then, Here's what a lot of people are not understanding is that in Sparking Zero you don't get like the whole cinematic for every single moment. You get like key moments. The uh, moment itself it's just it's a bit like a slideshow. It's a moving slideshow instead of a whole cinematic that lasts like half an hour like in Kakarot for example. And a lot of people are complaining about that but what I say to that is, if you want to see everything, go play Kakarot. This is a fighting game, we know the story, we just want to play the key moments, we don't want to see the whole thing again, we just played Kakarot one or two years ago. I think it's good that they have, it's like moving slideshows, like it's not even just a picture, it's like a moving picture. Like you know on your iPhone, when you have that live picture, you press on it and the like, picture moves for like one or two seconds. 
Like it's that all the time. Like it's moving pictures that and that makes it fast paced to get faster throughout the story, you know? But after completing Goku, you unlock other arcs like Vegeta, Trunks, Future Trunks, Piccolo, Jiren, and many, many others. And you can play those stories, and through playing those stories, you unlock characters, you unlock Zenny, the money to buy stuff in the shop. Then there's also some bad points, of course, about the story mode. Not many, but some bad points. One of the bad points I have is like the navigation through the map. You have to at moments map the story map and the navigation is kind of sluggish. Like you have to go from like from point to point to point to point or like there's a little slide thing that's a bit faster, but not like quite there yet. I think they should implement like, and you can just like with your analog stick go through the map, like as if you were a bird, you know? Like look from above and like, go like that, like freely through the map. That would be better in my opinion. Obviously then there's one major point, which for me isn't a bad point. It's been a bad point for a lot of people. Can understand why, but also I can not. <laughs> The difficulty level. So this is a major point in Sparking Zero, a major discussion point that people are having right now. It is that the game is too hard. And do I agree? Yes, kinda. In some battles, it's really, wow, very, very hard. Immediately at the beginning, when you get uh, to fight a great ape Vegeta, it feels like he's an Elden Ring boss. That's how hard it is. I managed to beat him on the 11th time. You can lower the difficulty. Here's the thing. You cannot choose the difficulty. It's a, it has a standard default difficulty. When you start losing, it gives you the option to retry with a lower difficulty. The thing is, if you go lower on the difficulty, yes, it makes the fight easier, but it's also boring, in my opinion. Because I've tried it. I've tried in some fights, I lowered the difficulty, I'm not ashamed to say that. I lowered it, and the fight kind of becomes a bit boring, because the opponent starts doing less and less, or just stands there. Especially during the Tournament of Power, I noticed I lowered it once for Jiren, because he was too heavy too strong. I lowered it down and I noticed he completely stopped fighting. He just like flew around, stopped on the other side of the map and I just stood there watching me like throwing Kamiyamihas at him. So that's why I prefer the like default normal difficulty. Especially with Great Ape Vegeta right at the beginning. I've seen people like already quitting the game because they cannot beat him or later on there's also some other like even harder fights like Goku Black, Zamazu, Jiren. Beerus was insanely hard for me. Like I was expecting Beerus to be very very hard but not that hard. If you're playing now and you're at Great Ape Vegeta and you think that Great Ape Vegeta is hard, wait until you get to Beerus and Jiren all of those. Like Dragon Ball Super territory. It's insane. Also what's amazing about the story mode is the what if scenarios. You're probably familiar with this what if thing. There's a lot of franchises that do this most notably like Marvel but they have a what if series on Disney Plus and Dragon Ball is nice porn in this. At certain moments in the game you have to make a decision. Good example when Raditz comes to the Kami house right at the beginning when Raditz comes to the Kami house and you have Krillin Piccolo, Goku, Master Roshi, Bulma, I think that's it, like they decide to fight it out and Raditz goes on, then you have to decide either if you take Piccolo's help or if you want to go alone at it. If you go alone, like choose a different way, you have to also complete certain tasks, like you have to beat him in a certain time or you have to beat him with a certain move. Uh, if you manage to do that, then there's that an alternative continuation of the story. It goes in a completely different path, the whole story, and it has like multiple of these what if scenarios throughout the story and that's amazing that they even thought of including something like that in the game because you have so much so many possibilities now to change the story to what you want yeah so that's basically my take on the story modes it's been a bit long but it's an amazing game it's an amazing story mode and you have to play it at lastly of course you have the online play i haven't played it much i've played a bit of normal like online battle and i've played like two or three ranked matches it's good it's 
It's a fighting game online, like there's nothing much to say about it. It does have a smooth matchmaking and barely any lags, like for me at least. And that brings me to one point that I think kind of sucks, is Dragon Ball Sparking Zero doesn't have crossplay. More and more games nowadays have crossplay. We got Call of Duty, we got uh, EAFC, uh, Fortnite, uh, and many many other games that have included crossplay in their games that you can play like PC, PS5 and Xbox everyone can play together Dragon Ball doesn't have that which in my opinion is a down point it's a minus one I was so excited to play this game with my friends problem is with my friends we all like play on different platforms. I'm playing Sparking Zero on the PC. I have friends that are playing on PS5. I have friends that are playing on Xbox. Like I have like one or two friends on PC, but most of the other like on console. That's why I was expecting it to have crossplay and hoping it had crossplay, but it doesn't. But I hope they include it in a future DLC. And in my opinion, it's possible to do with the DLC. I don't think they have to do a whole new game for that, but we'll see. It's needed, it's what the people want. We want to play with all our friends and not just a few friends. So, there you have it guys. Whether you're a long time fan of Dragon Ball or you want to be newly introduced to this Dragon Ball world, this game is the right choice for you. Before this, I would say like DBZ Kakarot well, is the best choice for people who want to discover the game. But if you want a more fast paced version, you can go with Sparking Zero. If not, if you want to like every single detail about the story, go to DBZ Kakarot. So I've been waiting 17 years, guys. Budokai Tenkaichi 3 came out in 2007. I was 13 years old at the time. I'm 30 now. And 17 years I've been waiting for this game and I have to say I am happy. I don't even know how to describe it. I'm happy even seeing a friend of mine. He's very, he doesn't talk much, you know, just talks like about certain stuff. Like he talks more about in real life stuff. Since the game come out, it's the only thing he talks about. And he's been a Dragon Ball fan his whole life. Been a long time since I've seen him so excited about the game. And myself included, I'm so happy for the, with this game. And I think the majority of Dragon Ball fans are as well. We want to thank Bandai Namco for making this possible and of course a huge thank you and a uh, rest in peace to Akira Toriyama and thank you for creating this world that we all love and cherish and <laughs> man every time I mention Akira I, um, I start tearing up but yeah guys, that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it leave a like if you do so and consider subscribing thanks for watching Bye.